there. My name is Heather. I'm Diane. And we're coming to you from Lifetime Adoption today. This is our Facebook Live on Friday. And now, right now, you are working with a number of families and birth mothers who are matched and planning planning for an adoption. Is that right? Yes, I sure am. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when are those due? I mean, it's it's March now. So what, what kind of due dates are you looking at you right know, now? You know, it really depends. Uh, some of our birth moms uh, match when they're 20 weeks along with their pregnancy. So it's kind of a longer process of working with them and assisting them. Uh, some don't match until they're closer to uh, their eighth or ninth month, so mm -hmm. it really depends. I have uh, two that I'm assisting right now that are due next month, so. Ah, um, so they're yeah. kind of getting getting ready, getting mm -hmm. those final things geared Not up much and, time left. and mm -hmm. ready. Good. Do, <coughs> do most of the women who call us, are they like ready to do adoption? Is that kind of their calling because they, they want to put an adoption plan in place and move forward? The women that are contacting us are at different stages um, of their decision what they want to do. Uh, sometimes we'll talk to um, a woman that will call us and she's not really sure what she wants to do. She hasn't really decided yet, um, but she would like to kind of learn about what her options are with adoption, uh, what type of adoptions are available. Um, not every woman that contacts us will be following through with an adoption. So. It's, we want to make sure that um, everybody has the information that they need to make the best possible choice that they feel for uh, their baby and also for themselves too. Mm -hmm. Now, are they, when they're calling in, are they wanting to learn more about adoption? Do you find they know a lot about it already? There, uh, that's a really great question because some women have already researched and know quite a bit about adoption, the different types of adoption. Some are totally unaware of what adoption is. Um, some really don't quite understand too that they can actually have an open adoption. So uh, maybe they had known a family member who years and years ago had placed a child for adoption and it was a pretty closed adoption mm -hmm. and uh, they're calling thinking that that's how adoptions are now um, and so we'll share information that they do have a choice now mm -hmm. uh, in an open adoption where they can continue contact. Right. In fact, one of the things I know I like to share is is there, there are really, I mean there's many choices in adoption but there's three main choices women have today. One is, like you said, to continue contact after the adoption has happened. Mm -hmm. Another is they have the choice of the adoptive parents. Mm -hmm. They can choose to not just pick out who they are, but also um, get to know them, talk to them, meet them, mm -hmm. email, you know, kind of start building a relationship there. And then they can also choose how things go at the hospital, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, it's, it's so much different than the olden days. You can choose... A woman can choose who's in the room with her and who mm -hmm. cuts the cord and all those all those choices that every mother has right. women choosing adoption have too mm -hmm. so that's that's exciting so when you have a woman say who calls you and isn't isn't sure wants to learn more um, what is what is kind of your number one resource for her you know what we do is we can send um, the birth mom that contacts us information um, by email. Mm -hmm. We can also mail some information and we have a wonderful little book called So I Was Thinking About Adoption and this book uh, goes over the types of adoption, uh, talks about um, kind of going into the decision-making process of coming to that decision what you want to do. It also talks about um, a little information about parenting a child and kind of what to expect um, with that. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, what type of open adoption, if you even want an open adoption, uh, it'll kind of go over the different types on that too. Um, a lot of great information about talking to adoptive parents too, um, questions to ask, um, things like that. Yeah, yeah, and, and what's really nice is you send it out in a plain envelope. So, exactly. So women mm -hmm. who want to learn more, nobody knows what's in it. It just looks right. like maybe you ordered something online or a friend sent you something. It's plane doesn't doesn't even have adoption as a return address so mm -hmm. so that's that's great is this available say somebody doesn't want to commit or doesn't have a mailing address mm -hmm. what do you do in that case we can email them a link to a free book download for the okay. book so they can download the book and they can read it in that manner too great what I like about the book is it has a lot of stories in it mm -hmm. 
And I, I think it's great too as a resource for parents who want to adopt. Yes, definitely. Because it really helps them get in the maybe in the mindset or mm -hmm. learn a little more about what questions women have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. In fact, go ahead. Because sometimes <clears throat> it's hard to kind of think. <clears throat> excuse me. Of what where that person is coming from on both sides of um, the adoption triad, whether it's the adoptive family or the birth mother. So it's really good to be um, able to have the information where you can consider kind of what, um, say, the birth mother is thinking about or what the adoptive parents are thinking about too. Right, right. I just want to say hi to some of you out there before we keep moving on. I know we had Rob here saying hi, Crystal, Lauren, Glad to see you, Ellen and, and Elizabeth. So glad you're here a lot more too. But um, so, so that kind of shares a little about the book. Um, one of the things that I mentioned too was that women can choose the adoptive parents. Mm -hmm. how, how, how do they choose? I mean, how, how do they get that information? You know, they can get the information several different ways. Um, they can request profiles of adoptive families to be sent to them, and we can do that. They can also go on our website at lifetimeadoption.com and they can actually view profiles of families. And there's even videos that our families have done uh, where the birth mother can actually see the family talking and uh, kind of talking about their life and what they, their lifestyle and what they have to offer. Um, really great. And it's got a little bio about the family too on it. Um, but the profiles that we send to birth mothers um, their profiles, longer version. Um, can you see this? <laughs> okay. Um, and it goes into a lot more detail than what you do see on the website. And it's got photos of the family, talks about their lifestyle, uh, things like that. There's also letters from their family and friends, uh, letters of recommendation in there. And it's, it's really great to be able to read about kind of what everybody else uh, knows about the family, how they feel about them too. So, and it does. It gives you. Too. I'm just going to mention quick about this one. She showed. This is Rodney and Shonda. They actually have previously adopted, mm -hmm. so they have experience um, with parenting, mm -hmm. with um, adoption, parenting and adoption child. They live in in Texas. Um, so those are the types of things <coughs> you may learn um, when you're when you're looking looking at family. Mm -hmm. And every family is different. I think just like every woman considering adoption is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And then um, we have families also that are open um, to all different races. Mm -hmm. uh, birth mothers can actually select the race uh, that they would like for their child. For um, the family. For the family. Right. Mm -hmm. And families um, with children, families without children. So there's a lot of choices uh, right. that a birth mother would have today regarding a family. Do you ever have women that say, you know, I'd, I, I'd like to see a family that maybe they're very musical or mm -hmm. maybe that has horses. Do you get specific requests like that? Yes, we do. Uh, definitely so. Uh, sometimes a birth mother might be requesting a family that lives in a particular part of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, maybe she'd like a family that lives near the beach or mm -hmm. a family up in the mountains. Uh, family on a farm, mm -hmm. you know, like we mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, with animals. Mm -hmm. um, maybe she grew up in the city and didn't really have an opportunity to um, experience life like that, and so she wants that for her child. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And, and in regards to that, what about a woman who says, you know, I'm just not sure about adoption? Mm -hmm. Is, can she still see profiles of families? Definitely so, because sometimes just being able to read about the families, what they have to offer, there might be something that kind of clicks in there and then she might say, oh, that's exactly what I was looking for uh, in a family. So it's very, it, it's really helpful to be able to see the profiles of families and look through and see what each one has to offer. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's important in making a decision. Too. Definitely. Because it, it is sometimes, you know, it might just be, it's, I, sometimes it's, I think it's kind of like, you know, dating. You might look mm -hmm. at pictures of, of people, but until you meet somebody and you see mm -hmm. if you hit it off, you know, you're, you may not have any idea. Right. So, um, so it's kind of nice and just to learn more about them, mm -hmm. too. And you said, now you said that these families, they also have videos on yes. their website. Mm -hmm. Do you find that um, 
women like to see the videos also. Yes, definitely so, because they can actually see the families interacting with each other. So mm -hmm. there's, there's a big difference in just seeing something in print and then actually being able to watch them talk to each other, hear their voices. Um, that can make a big deal of difference uh, with that comfort level too on that family. Yeah, very cool. That's neat. Now I know sometimes adoptive parents ask us, do you ever get pictures of the birth mothers who are considering adoption, those women? Do you, do you get pictures of them? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. From time to time we do. Um, and birth mothers, um, in some cases, they might not quite be in the position where they have access to a lot of photos, things like that. Mm -hmm. So we do um, ask them if they'd like to share a photo, and most that do have them would be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. Great. Wonderful. Um, we have a lot of other people joining us here. Hi, LaTanya, Jessica, um, Wade and Sarah are here. We're all glad that you are here joining us today. Um, so you brought a few other things to show that you share with women. Um, what, what do you kind of like here the best? Well, there's a article that we have uh, called 24 Questions Women Ask About Adoption. And this really goes over pretty much every question, I think. Uh, very in-depth, but yet kind of right to the point. Um, questions like, can I see my baby at the hospital? Mm -hmm. um, that's something where you do have a choice in that. You can see your child at the hospital. You can have time to bond with your child at the hospital. It's not kind of like how in the olden days and things that you hear about in movies where they came and they took the child and the birth mother never got to see the child. I mean, you have those choices with adoption now. Mm -hmm. So you can see your child, you can spend time with your child too. Mm -hmm. What do you think the, the most common question you get? Or maybe a couple of the most common questions you get? Um, I think one of the most common questions I get is, um, will I be able to maintain contact? Mm -hmm. after the baby is placed with the adoptive parents. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's a real concern uh, with the birth mother. Um, and most of the adoptions that we do help uh, with nowadays are pretty open where there is that contact going back and forth and even continue contact uh, after the baby would be placed with the adoptive parent. So um, that contact too can vary. Uh, letters and pictures sent back and forth. Um, some of our clients want pictures sent through us. Uh, sometimes there's phone uh, calls back and forth. Uh, and then in some cases, the family and birth mother and child, they can get together once a year, maybe for like a get together, at like a park or restaurant, something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's great. How, how does a woman know, say, you know, back to maybe one of the profiles we were mm -hmm. looking at, how, how does she know, you know, what a family may be open to? Do they include that in their profile? What we do when uh, we have a birth mother that calls us, we do an intake on her and we ask questions. Um, what are you looking for in mm -hmm. terms of an adoptive family? Uh, questions like, do you want a particular race of family, a uh, family with children, without children, things like that. Um, so we try to get a picture of what she's looking for in a family. Mm -hmm. Then we'll send her profiles that match uh, what her preferences are at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So if, I know we were looking at some, some information we've gathered over the last year recently. And one of the things that really stood out, I think, to both of us was how many women say they heard about lifetime adoption from a friend mm -hmm. or a mother or a, a professional, something like that. Um, and, and I think one of the important things in that is, is not only sharing lifetime, but also sharing kind of where we started today that just because you call doesn't mean you're committing or obligating to adoption. Really, right. I think a lot of the work we do is education about adoption. Exactly. So exactly. if you have a woman who calls and says, you know, thanks a lot for the information, Diane, but adoption isn't right mm -hmm. for my baby. You know, how do you handle that? I let her know that that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and if she should have any other questions, to feel free to contact us. In some cases, we'll uh, give information to um, a woman, and then we might not hear from her for quite a while, and then 
uh, we get a phone call and she says, you know what, I've really decided this is something I wanted to do. I didn't want to get too involved until I knew this is what I wanted. And then she'll kind of pick up at that point and complete her adoption plan. So mm -hmm. everybody's different. Uh, some of the women that are contacting us are um, very sure about their um, adoption plan, uh, want to kind of get going, get started right away. Others aren't really sure, they just kind of want to learn about it. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to meet them where they're at mm -hmm. when they call. Mm -hmm. What about women who may have, like I say, may have told you, thanks, but that's not for me, but then maybe they have their baby, and that baby's mm -hmm. six months, eight mm -hmm. months, maybe even a year old. Mm -hmm. um, are they still able to call? Yes, they certainly are. We do have families that are open to babies that have already been born, uh, and older children too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens, this is one of the questions um, that actually was asked here, and that was, what happens when, say, a woman is matched with a family and she changes her mind? Well, kind of at, on both sides. Mm -hmm. At that time, um, as far as, like, what happens? Well, what happens maybe for the family and maybe what happens for, for the, the birth mom, who now no longer is going to be a birth mom. She's just going to be a mom. Right. So, right. so she maybe calls you and says, hey, Diane, mm -hmm. you know, I, I really like Joe and Sarah, but I've, I, you know, I, I'm, mm -hmm. I've really been thinking about it. Or maybe the father came back into her mm -hmm. life and is supportive. Or maybe, you know, circumstances change. Mm -hmm. Right. So now I, I, I want a parent. Mm -hmm. Well, I think kind of at that point what we would do is really talk to her, kind of find out the reasonings behind mm -hmm. that. Um, did something just happen recently that made her change her mind? Uh, was it uh, something, something was said? A family member might have said something. So... Mm -hmm. We would try to kind of talk um, with her about uh, her decision, mm -hmm. why things have changed, what's changed, you know, mm -hmm. since she had originally called us. Mm -hmm. um, and we always encourage the families um, to let us know if they learn anything like that right, um, right away so we can talk to uh, the birth mom and also just provide services for her at that time too where she's at. Uh, maybe she would like to talk to the counselor again. Uh, maybe she would like to talk to a peer support. Um, those are women that have chosen an adoption plan, so that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but we try to kind of find, kind of listen to her. I think listening is so very important um, because we do give the information and, and kind of what the process is, but I think really listening to um, where she's at and how we can best help her at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We have another couple questions that some people have sent in here. Um, a couple people asked about the nursery in regards to the profiles. Does it matter if a family has a nursery set up and has a picture in the profile, or maybe a family doesn't feel comfortable kind of doing that ahead of time? You know, in regards to birth mothers, mm -hmm. does it matter? You know, I think um, I've heard a lot of comments from birth moms saying they like to see that the family's ready for the child um, because it kind of it paints a picture for them and this is what is very important uh, with the profiles with our families uh, that they do is to you you want to paint a picture of what life is going to be like for her child in your home um, so I think it's a good thing to um, have pictures of the nursery in there um, now, as far as things like families preparing, uh, doing things like baby showers and things like that, I kind of think it's it's better kind of just from from this standpoint of looking at it to kind of wait until you have that child and you know that everything has been completed. And then uh, the positive of that, too, is you're going to know then the gender of the baby and <laughs> yeah. um, you'll have the baby so you can right. have a big party after um, with that. But I think those kind of things are kind of better to wait. But as yeah. far as like pictures of the nursery, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Now, one mm -hmm. thing you said that I really like, you said um, that pictures like that or pictures of family. Mm -hmm. um, we keep looking at this one. I'm just going to show this so people see what we're what we're looking at right here. This is a this is a, a couple, um, Dan and Elena. You can see they have adopted before. They have a, an African American son. Um, so it, it kind of paints a picture for a woman that okay, this is I mean there's a lot of action mm -hmm. photos inside, but it it paints a picture of, of who they are. Mm -hmm. But um, that's just such a nice way of saying that, how how it paints a picture and mm -hmm. I think just briefly touching on the videos again, that that is a whole different picture because you see the live 
interaction, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say? Mm, definitely so. Yeah. yeah. It makes a difference. It really does. Because it's a lot different than just reading about somebody on paper than actually watching someone interact so right. and, and talk. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's been exciting for all of us here mm -hmm. since we've started doing those videos. Just really seeing the response Right. from women about that even women who say you know I was considering adoption mm -hmm. I found you know some families on your site with video that was really cool mm -hmm. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna place my child but I just wanted to share this feedback with you and that's I mean that's really nice when somebody yeah. stops to, to, to say something really Definitely. Mm -hmm. so um is there anything else you brought here you want to share not really I think we covered think it all that's it pretty much yeah mm -hmm. um so you know, I just, like I say, I think I think we've gone over some great things here, Diane. Mm -hmm. One thing I just want to kind of circle back to is, you know, sharing adoption. If you're adopting, sharing that with people. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not adopting, but maybe you know someone who might need to consider adoption. You know, a, a simple phone call to Lifetime is just to learn more. It's mm -hmm. not to commit. It's right. not, it's not... Um, just learning getting information that's mm -hmm. that's what we often do is just provide that that information and counseling do you want to touch briefly on the counseling we provide too yes. for women considering adoption certainly we have um, actual licensed phone counselors uh, that can talk to um, our birth moms and they are independent so they're not located in our office so they're independent licensed counselors and um, it's something to where uh, the counselor can call at a certain specific time and uh, talk to the birth mother. And also, in addition to the counseling, uh, we also have peer support, uh, which we had talked about a little bit before, from other women that have chosen an adoption plan. And we hear from a lot of our birth moms that that's been very helpful because it's actually someone who's been where she's at and someone that knows the feelings that are associated with it and has a lot of really great, helpful helpful ideas, helpful tips, and that we have a variety of peer support counselors that help uh, mm -hmm. with our um, birth moms. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Well, you know, we've answered a lot of questions, covered a lot of ground. Nice. Have a great weekend, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.